Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is an A-level chemistry video and it's going to look at the EZ geometric isomerism in alkenes. First up though, if you don't subscribe, please do. Your support is very much appreciated. Use the comments and the like features and let me know what you think. Now geometric isomerism is when we have the same structural formula but a different arrangement in space. And the simplest example I can give there is something like this. That's a CH3 group and a H. So this is but2ene. It's butene with a double bond between the second and third carbon. So that's but2ene. And on the right hand side, I'm also going to draw but2ene. However, you can see that those two methyl groups are on opposite sides opposite ends we have the ch3 at the top and then the ch3 at the bottom on the right hand side and on the left hand side we have the ch3 at the top both of them at the top now because we don't get free rotation this can't just rotate and be the same as the other one they are definitely different they are classed as geometric isomers they have the same structural formula which in this case is ch3 ch CH, CH3. And if I do the structural formula of the one on the right, it's exactly the same. CH3, CH, double bond CH, CH3. But they are definitely not the same thing. If we were to make these with molly mods, they are non superimposable. They have a different arrangement in space. So we need to come up with a way of naming these isomers. So let me draw these two again for us. And we, we use the CIP rules and you do need to be able to assign CIP rules. So I'm just gonna draw the two isomers out again. Here we go. Now what we do is we identify the double bond first. So let's identify the double bond. And let's draw a line through that double bond. Now I'm going to look at the left hand side on both cases and I'm going to assign a priority to one of the groups. We have two groups. On the left hand side we have a CH3 and a H and that's the same in both examples with a CH3 and a H. Now what we do is we look at the atom that's bonded to the carbon so in this case, it's H, and in this case, it's C. And again, it's C and H. And what we do is we look at the atomic number of that atom. This has an atomic number six. This has the atomic number one. We use the periodic table to find the atomic numbers. Oops, why am I writing H? It's one. And what we do is... The highest wins, simple as that. So this wins, doo -doo, gold medal, and this has come second. So there's always a first and a second place. First, second. So we awarded first place here and second place down here. First place up here, second place down here. Now we're going to go through the same reasoning, but this time I'm going to look at the right hand side. So I'm going through the same logic. On the right hand side, we've got carbon and hydrogen. This is atomic number six. This is atomic number one. Six wins, doo -doo -doo. that's the highest. So the highest priority is there. The second priority is there. I'll apply the same logic here. We've got hydrogen, which is one. Carbon, atomic number six. Six is higher than one. So the number one priority is here. Second priority is here. Now what we do is we look and if the if the high priority groups are on the same side as in here look so the number one priority is on the same side here this is called the Z isomer now my understanding is the Z comes from zusammen in German which means together so the Z is zusammen together and if the number one priority groups are not together they're opposite as they are in this example here they're opposite that is the e isomer 
Now again, I believe that is entgegen, which means opposite in German. But someone can correct me if you think I'm wrong. So that's our E and Z isomers. So assigning priority rules based upon the atomic number. So let's look at a slightly more difficult example then. So this one is slightly more difficult. So let's talk through the rules again. So let's draw that line through that double bond. And then let's just look at the right hand side to start with. The right hand side is fairly straightforward. We've got the atomic number six and the atomic number 17. 17 wins hands down. So number one is at the top, number two is down the bottom. Let's have a look on the left hand side. We've got the atomic number six and the atomic number six. Problem. Okay, so there's a tie. Then what we do, if it's a tie, they're gonna go to the next biggest down the line. So in the case of the, the carbon at the top, it's a carbon bonded to two hydrogens, but another carbon. So let's go to the, to the next biggest. So it's six, six, this one. The CH3 group, it's six. And then the next biggest we can find is one. So it's lost in a playoff this. So this has come second and this is number one. So now we find that our two number ones are at the top. They are together, zuzaman. So this is the Z isomer. Okay, I'm gonna suggest you pause the video now and then you try and do these two yourself. Identify them as E or Z isomers, applying our SIP rules. And when you're ready, unpause the video and see if you got them right. Right, let's start over here on the left then. So draw your line through the bond. On the right hand side, number one. Hang on a minute, what am I doing? The right hand side has atomic number one and this has atomic number nine. Nine wins. So number one priority is down the bottom. Left hand side, atomic number 17 and atomic number nine. 17 wins. So number one, number two. So we have opposite here. This is Entgegen. This is E, the E isomer. Entgegen. Don't need to know the Entgegen zusammen. It just helps us remember them. So this is the E isomer on the left. Right hand side, drop a line. I'm going to start on the left here. Atomic number nine, atomic number 12. Atomic number six, not 12, that's the mass. So it's atomic number. And again, it's quite common for students to ask me. Um, so, you know, some textbooks and some version guides will state it's mass, it's not, it is atomic number. So nine does win, nine wins. Number one is up the top, number two is down the bottom. And I've been a little awkward on the one on the right because we go six and six, it's a tie. The next biggest on the bottom is six. The next biggest is bromine, which I'm now closing my eyes and I can't remember, but it's much bigger than six, I know for a fact. Um, I don't have a periodic table, I know the mass, but it's definitely, definitely bigger than six. So don't know what it is. You can be smug and find out, but that's definitely bigger. I'm confident it's bigger than six. So number one is at the top. So this is the zuzaman, the Z isomer. And that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.